acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our healer. John chapter 18. The story we have here is, we have to remember, right? Last week we had John chapter 13, where Jesus sat at the table and had dinner with his disciples and washed their feet, right? Remember, I said last Sunday that that was the beginning of the Monday Thursday, what is Monday Thursday in the Gospel of John. And I said it went for a really long time, right? Well, this passage, John 18, 12 through 27, is the last part of Monday Thursday night. So to us, it was a week ago we had that first lesson. To them, it was merely a few hours when all of this transpired. So you have to remember that as we talk about this this morning, right? It's not separated by, an, a man, by a huge span of time. It all happens within one night's time frame. He washed their feet. He told them that one of them was going to betray him or, or hand him over. He gave them a new commandment. And then he said... Something was going to happen, which, which happened this morning in our reading, right? The, the last thing that Charmaine read was, and at that moment, the cock crowed, right? And so why did the cock crow? Lynn's not here, I can't ask him. This morning. Why? This morning. It was morning, but that's not why the cock crowed. It is why the cock crowed, but it's not why the cock crowed. Why did the cock crow? Because Peter denied him three times, and after Jesus gave the commandment that you should love one another so that they will know that you are my disciples, Peter said, he said that he was going to have to go to the cross and die, and Peter said that he was going to go with him, and, and Jesus looked at him and said, you're going to go with me and die with me? I tell you tonight before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And when it happened the third time, the cock crow. Now we have to understand this text a little bit more to, to really see what's happening here. And my question for you, before we dive further into this, which might seem a little strange question because all of you are sitting, but my question for you is, where are you standing? Or maybe even better is, who are you standing with? See, our lesson this morning has Jesus being arrested. So just before this, Jesus and the disciples were in the garden. The garden is, is, is only seen in the Gospel of John. It's, it's a place of great relationship where Jesus has gone many times with his disciples to spend time talking about things, teaching them, praying with them, praying by himself, just being there in relationship with them. And this is where Judas comes in and kisses him, and they arrest him, and they take him away. Right? And then he goes to Annas' house so that he can be put on trial. And if you read back a little bit in this night, too, we see that the Sanhedrin had already decided that he needed to be put to death. So there was really no need for this trial. It was basically just a thing that they had to do in order to be able to hand him over to Pontius Pilate, which we'll talk about next week. But they had a trial for him. And, and J Peter and another disciple, who we don't know who that is, go with him. And the disciple, the other disciple, is known by those who are there. So they let him go in. But Peter has to stay outside. Right? This happens in all of the Gospels. But this morning it's a little bit different. You see, because when this other disciple goes out to talk to the woman and Peter starts to come in, what is the question that she asks Peter? She says, Are you... I gotta find it here quick. You are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? Which is actually a question that's supposed to get a positive answer. The way that it's phrased in the Greek, you can't see that from the English, but the way that it's phrased in the Greek is it's supposed to be a yes, I am. Because obviously this slave girl knew that the other person that was asking her to let him in was one of Jesus' disciples. 
So she asked Peter, you are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? And Peter says, he doesn't say no. It's very specific in the Gospel of John what he says. And it's very important to understand why he says it this way. He says, I am not. And then he goes and stands at the fire. And then, they ask Jesus some questions, right? That's the way that our reading reads this morning. Right? It's like, all of this stuff happens, they take Jesus in, and then, and then there's like this pause on what's going on with Jesus. And this stuff with Peter happens. And then once Peter gets into the courtyard, through the gate, which by the way, the word for, for door here is the same word used for gate in John chapter 10, which is the good shepherd. And the word used here for courtyard is the same word used there for pen or pasture that is used in chapter 10 in the Good Shepherd text. When Jesus talks about, I am the gate and you come in and out of me to go to pasture. But this stuff happens, right? They take Jesus in and Jesus is put on hold and then the stuff with Peter happens. And then we go back to Jesus, right? That's the way that the story is read. That's the way that it's written, right? So that's the way that it happened. This, this means yes. This means no. This means... Probably not. It didn't probably happen that way. You see, Jesus was taken into the house. And the people that were outside were the slaves and the Roman soldiers, the people that couldn't go into the house. So while Jesus was being questioned by Annas and all of those in the house, Peter was being questioned outside the house. It's not like this happened, then this happened. It's this all happened at the same time. But we can't read about it all at the same time. John can't tell us about it all at the same time. We have to read it in a story form. But if we were to see this, these would be two scenes that are happening at the exact same moment. Jesus is being questioned by Annas, and outside Peter is being questioned by slaves. One is being put on trial by people that matter. One is being asked questions by people that, in society's eyes, don't matter. One of them finally has a public forum where he can actually talk about who he is and what he's come to do, what he has come here to do for all of us. And one of them is outside talking to people that can't do anything about anything that he's done in his life. And yet he says the exact opposite of what this one says over here. See, that's why it's important to look at that and realize that why Peter says not no when he's asked if he's one of this man's disciples. He says, I am not. Because just a few verses earlier in the garden, right, when Jesus was arrested, the Roman soldiers came and said, that looked like they were looking for somebody. So Jesus stepped forward and he said, who are you looking for? And the Roman soldiers said, Jesus of Nazareth. And what did Jesus say? I am. Which is profound in many facets. Because I am is the name of God. And that's why those soldiers fell down on their faces. They weren't Roman soldiers. They were soldiers of the Sanhedrin. They were temple guards. And when he claimed, when he said I am, they knew exactly what he was saying. Claiming that he is God. And so they fell on their faces and worshipped him. But it's important to note that Jesus, while Jesus says I am, Peter says I am not. And he not only says it once in the Gospel of John, but he says it twice. The third time, we don't really know what he says. It just says that he denied it. Right? But Peter is then, after that first time, when we think we see Jesus being questioned, he's standing at a charcoal fire. And who is he standing there with? The slaves of Annas, the guards, and all of those who want Jesus to be put to death. That's why I asked you, where are you standing? And 
Who are you standing with? You see, it's really easy for us to do what Peter did. To go with the crowd and not talk about our faith and not talk about what God has done for us. Because sometimes it's not an easy thing for us to understand or an easy thing for us to talk about. But that's not where we're called to stand. That's not what we're called to do. You see, we look at this passage and we say that the, the cock crowing was something that was bad. Something that, that showed Peter exactly how far he had strayed away from the fold. Right? That's the, sing, that's the signal to Peter that he's ultimately messed up because it's what Jesus said was going to happen. Right? Jesus said, tonight before the cock crows three times, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And that's exactly what happened. And as that cock crowed, Peter stood at that fire and he wondered what in the world was going on. Well, that's what we think. Maybe. Maybe. That cock crowing, signaling dawn. Which, and as that dawn comes what? The rising of the sun and the dawning of the light. And at that moment that that cock crowed, we think that that's the end and that's the sentencing of Peter being someone who has denied and taken away what Christ has done for him. But I will tell you that I believe that the moment that that cock crowed, that Peter remembered exactly what Jesus had said to him and remembered exactly whose he was. And it doesn't matter how far he strayed in the fact that he said, denying his own identity as a disciple. Because in the other Gospels, it was asked of Peter, do you know this man? And he said, I, I do not know this man. But here in the Gospel of John, he actually says, I am not a disciple. But at that moment, that cock crowed, he was reminded exactly what Jesus was doing for him and had done for him and who Jesus was and what Jesus had come to do. And at that moment, that's when the grace came. Because we don't see it this morning, but I'll invite you to go and read chapter 21, the Gospel of John. And on Easter morning, you'll hear the story of Jesus rising from the tomb and the story after that when John and Peter go running and they run into the tomb and they see it empty and the angel says to Peter, the angel says to the women to go tell the disciples. The angel says to them, does anyone know what the angel says? Go tell the disciples and Peter that I have risen from the dead. Go tell the disciples and Peter. Because you see, that night he denied that he was a disciple. But Jesus didn't take that. Because Jesus knows where we stand. And he can always give us the grace to help us stand where we need to. Even when we want to take the easy way stand where it's easiest for us to. So think about how we're like Peter. But always remember that God loves us enough not to leave us at that charcoal fire. Because he'll bring us to another one and always bring us back to understand whose we are. Which is a child of God. So never forget that. You are God's beloved child. And he will always do everything he needs to. To help you understand that. And empower you to go into the world. To share that with everyone else.